We only need to use the word faith when there isn't any evidence. No, not at all. I presume you've got faith in your wife. Is there any evidence for that? Yes, which plenty. You base it? Yes. Plenty of evidence. Um, mm. I... <laughs> Let's generalize it. Never mind about my wife. Let's generalize it. Here's a snippet of the classic debate between world-renowned atheist Richard Dawkins and Oxford professor John Lennox on the relationship between science and religion in the year 2007. We now understand essentially how life came into being. We know that uh, we are all cousins of all animals and plants. We know that we're descended from uh, a common ancestor which might have been something like bacteria. We know the process by which that came about. We don't know the details, but we understand essentially how it came about. There are still gaps in our understanding. We don't understand how the cosmos came into existence in the first place, but we're working on that. The scientific enterprise is an active seeking, an active seeking out of gaps in our knowledge, seeking out of ignorance, so that we can work to plug that ignorance. But religion teaches us to be satisfied with not really understanding. Every one of these difficult questions that comes up. Science says, right, let's roll up our sleeves and work on it. Religion says, oh, God did it. We don't need to work on it. God did it. It's as simple as that. We have no thrusting force pushing us on to try to understand. Religion stultifies the impulse to understand because religion provides a facile, easy, apparent explanation, although as we'll see later in the evening, it isn't really an explanation, and it prevents the further work on the problem. Here Dawkins presents the idea that religion stultifies the further probing of the universe. But is it really a valid argument? It is a known fact that modern science is the child of European civilization. This is due to the unique contribution of the Christian faith to Western culture. As science writer Loren Isley states, it is the Christian world which finally gave birth in a clear articulate fashion to the experimental method of science itself. Hence Dawkins' argument that religion discourages scientific research is purely a secular Western propaganda and undermines the contribution of Christianity to scientific knowledge. Richard referred to the very important fact that science, uh, modern science as we know it, exploded in the 16th and 17th centuries, and it arose out of a theistic background. And many philosophers of science have studied this and come to the conclusion that's now called Whitehead's thesis, that human beings became scientific because they expected law in nature, and they expected law in nature because they believed in a lawgiver. I think that is profoundly important because it means far from religion hindering science, it was the driving force behind the rise of science in the first place. And when Isaac Newton, for example, discovered his law of gravity and wrote down the equations of, of motion, he didn't say, marvelous, I now understand it, I've got a mechanism, therefore I don't need God. In fact, it was the exact opposite. It was because he understood the complexity and sophistication of the mathematical description of the universe that he, his praise for God was increased. And I would like to suggest Richard, that somewhere down in this, you're making a category mistake because you're confusing mechanism with agency. We have a mechanism, it does X, Y, and Z, therefore there's no need for an agent. I would suggest that the sophistication of the mechanism, and science rejoices in finding such mechanisms, is evidence for the sheer wonder of the creative genius of God. Absolutely on point. In fact, the very Darwin evolution that Mr. Dawkins subscribes to pleads for the question of why do we live in a universe where evolution is even possible. The fine-tuned universe where intelligent life began to emerge bags for an agent outside of this wonderfully complex yet constant cosmos. Hence string theorist Leonard Susskind, a non-religious scientist, commenting on the fine-tuning argument states, it is possible that an unknown agent set the early conditions of the universe we observe today. When you say faith is rational and evidence-based, I mean, if that were true, it wouldn't need to be faith, would it? I mean, if there, if there were evidence for it, uh, why would you need to call it faith? You'd say just evidence. And when you said that, we, that, that faith in relativity, in, in Einstein's theory of, of, re of relativity, is, is evidence-based, that, of course, it is. But um, the, but the evidence is, is all important. I mean, Einstein's predictions fit in with, um, with uh, uh, observed fact and, they, and with a whole body of theory, whereas we only need to use the word faith when there isn't any evidence. No, not at all. Mm. I, I
presume you've got faith in your wife. Is there any evidence for that? Yes, plenty. You base it? Yes. Plenty of evidence. Um, mm. I... <laughs> Let's generalise it. Never mind about my wife. Let's generalise it. <laughs> it's the same with Biden, Richard. It's the same with Biden. Let's say, let's say that in general, how do we know that somebody loves us? Okay? Yes. Um, you can use a word faith for that if you like, but it's not the, it's not a, the right use of the word. Because, oh, it is. Because you, you, know why, you know your wife loves you because of all sorts of little signs, little catches in the voice, little, mm. little looks in the eye. Um, that's the evidence of it. Yes, that's, that's evidence. Right. That's perfectly good evidence. That's not faith. Yes, it is. Well, okay, then, then <laughs> we're coming down to pure, to pure semantics. Um, I think you've been influenced too much by Kant, you see. Uh, well, who, not explicitly, I have to say. <laughs> In our modern age, the word faith is somehow defined as believing something without evidence. But that is far from truth, Christian faith is based on evidence and not merely blind trust in an unknown spirit. Christian faith in God is based primarily on the faithful testimony of the scriptures, the logical coherence of the intelligibility of the cosmos created by an intelligent designer and the internal persuasion by the work of the Holy Spirit. To that end, Christian faith is not a leap into the dark but a leap into the light.